living towards the new living. Our scripture reading today comes to us from Paul's letter to the churches of Rome, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, which is your reasonable worship also. Do not be conformed to this age or this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect, or what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Presenting your bodies as a holy sacrifice to God. This is the second section of Paul's letter to the churches of Rome opening a new thing of new life in Christ. And Paul speaks often about the new life in Christ to Gentile believers. After all, Gentiles are new converts. And Paul, pressing the point here in Romans, that not to be conformed to this age is the literal Greek, where we often say conform to this world. The present age is coming to an end. The new age is about to come. And Jesus is the first sign of the new age. And what is the evidence of the first sign of the new age is the presence of the Holy Spirit within us now abiding with us to give us the strength to endure, as Paul would certainly say the in his apocalyptic theological view that an age of suffering was to come between the end of the present age in his time and place, the Roman Empire of the first century, and the age to come, which would be the age of the Messiah, and the new, which is often talked about in apocalyptic literature as the time when God's perfect will is on earth as it is in heaven. But what are the evidences that the new age is part of your body, part of your life, that you are living as if the new age has already arrived. Well, Paul gives us a series of lists in various letters of his writings called the Fruits of the Spirit. And you may or may not be familiar with these. But in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, he gives probably the most common list. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. So if you are following Christ, the evidence of your following Christ would be in the fruits of the Spirit that now come out of you naturally as part of your life. That there is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We are not who we once were. We have presented our old selves, our old lives, to a new way of living and are working towards that new way of living. He has given us the Holy Spirit to abide with us, to remind us, to share and speak with us and show us what is best. And what is the best of the world is, interestingly enough, or at least the best of the fruits of the Spirit, is exactly what is the best in human well-being. The best of ourselves tends to be the same things that Paul lists as fruits of the Spirit. We know those things are nearly, are always good. And when they are not present, we can ask for them. We can ask for help. And the Holy Spirit will help us produce fruit in our lives as a result. So, today, if not every day, spend time asking the Holy Spirit to help grow fruits of the Spirit in your life. And then look for opportunities to grow in the new life in Christ.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that your kingdom is coming. It has already arrived and is still arriving. Help us to be mindful of you sacrificing the present age in exchange for an age that has no end. Grow within us the fruits of your spirit that others may be drawn to your light, drawn to your mercy, drawn to your love. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.